Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I'm excited to share today in history, July 14th, 2014, because it was on this day in history that a long age tradition of having just male bishops in the church was broken. Now, on this day in history, the Church of England voted in favor of allowing women to become bishops. And uh, the Church's National Assembly, known as the General Synod, approved this historic measure at a, at a meeting by a vote of 351 in favor, 72 opposed, and 10 abstained. Now, this you know, cannot be exaggerated because like I mentioned, you know, when people even begin to quote scriptures to say women should not be the head, you know, men should be the head of the home, the head of the church. So this is a bill that, you know, it's been, it's been delegated over for, 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 or deliberated over for a while, even two years before then in 2012, it was rejected. But the great thing was on this day in history, this issue over which the church had been deeply divided was resolved and women could now become bishops, you know, in the church of England. So that basically is our story for you today on Today in History. Um, I, I think a couple of years earlier, um, I think, I'm not sure. I think 2002, I believe, mm -hmm. um, they had also lifted the ban on women becoming priests uh, before this one eventually happened in 2014. Yes. Um, and I would also share the, the, the um, there were legal obstacles to this. You know, there was also uh, some of those who rejected uh, the um, uh, bill. Yes, the traditionalists. Um, because of, of, you know, their belief in God and what the Bible, you know, taught them on some of all of that. Um, the, uh, the moves to dismantle the legal obstacles, let me share. Uh, began in 2005, but in 2012, the change was blocked by a small margin of representatives in the, in the general um, synod. Women serve as archbishops, or rather bishops in Anglican communion churches in several countries, including the United States, Australia, and Canada. But some Anglican, Anglican churches in developing countries do not even ordain women as uh, priests. Um, so yeah, th th there is that. Um, of course, that, I think that includes Nigeria. Uh, there's no female bishops or priests here yet, are they? I, I think I know there's a... Is it Bishop or Reverend Margaret Idahosa? I can't remember all the that's titles, not, but I think she's... That's not an Anglican church, is well, it? I, I know that she has a title that is foremost. Mm. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I know she's big in that regard. Um, but I think today was that's historic. Church of mission. That, that, that's a Pentecostal, yes, Pentecostal yes, church. Yes, it is a Pentecostal um, church. You said there were no bishops, so I didn't know you were trying to divide. Um, in, the, in the Anglican church, you know, that's what I mean. Um, because this conversation now is in England and it's in the Anglican church, yes. um, um, which has, of course, a majority of the Christians in England, um, um, basically, you know. So here in Nigeria, in the Anglican community in Nigeria, I don't think there's any female bishop or female priest. Mm. I've, I've never We're heard We're still of getting that. there, but we know that they achieved, you know, that historic moment for the church and equality. Mm. So it's only a matter of time before the rest of the world, you know, adjusts. Absolutely. Yes. All right, let's move to Afghanistan. Uh, and this happened in 2012. It's not a very happy story, but on this day, a suicide bomber blew himself up, detonated in a wedding in Afghanistan, just when Flavor was singing Adada. That's a joke. Um, um, 17 people eventually lost their lives. It was a lone suicide bomber that detonated a vest filled with explosives at a wedding in northern Afghanistan, killing at least 17 guests, including a top politician. Police say 22 people died and about 40 were injured, uh, were wounded rather, in the attack. The attacker's blast tore through the wedding hall in Aibak, cap the capital of Samangan province. Uh, the attack seemed to target him, of course, uh, the militia, militia leader um, at that time, as he welcomed guests into the entrance of the hall. He was elected to parliament during the trouble 2010 poll. A number of security top officials uh, were also assassinated in northern Afghanistan in the build-up, you know, in the 18 months before that um, explosion eventually took place. Um, um, it, it's not a story that, you know, is very, very shocking. And th this is why, um, for a long time, this is a very sad point I'm going to make. For a long time, we've heard of similar, you know, things like this in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Iraq, where you have suicide bombers and, and the likes um, um, uh, blowing themselves up at, you know, in churches and marketplaces um, and all of that. And when you see it in the news, when you see it on CNN, you almost just say, okay, another day in the market or another, day, another regular Tuesday. But sadly, we have gotten there in Nigeria where we hear of kidnapping as, oh, okay, well, another Thursday evening, you know, business as usual for these kidnappers. 
Um, that's where we are in Nigeria. And so when you have a bomb blast in some of the, these Middle Eastern countries, you don't even... It doesn't even, stay you know, in motion anymore. Okay, yeah. You know, 14 people died in a bomb blast. Okay. Um, but when we hear these days, oh, 12 people were kidnapped in Kaduna State. Okay. That's the sad part of, you know, failure to address some of all these things. It becomes normal. You know, and the value of life, like uh, um, Ambrose Ibope had mentioned, the value of the Nigerian life has been reduced to absolutely almost nothing. And that's why these stories and these, you know, figures don't shock anybody anymore. 222 people killed in three months in Kaduna exactly. State. Exactly. And they say, and oh, don't worry, it's, on. on. it's only 10. It's really? Exactly. Ten? It's yeah. only 10? And, and, wow. and guess what? We don't know the names of these 222 people. We don't have their identities because they're really in Nigeria just figures. They're I numbers. saw a picture yesterday, you know, parents whose ch children, ha you know, had been kidnapped, you know, they gathered the the footwear of these children and they were just mourning. Mm. And just, just see the, you know, the heap of those, you know, slippers and sandals that these kids once wore yeah. and the parents, you know, having no clue where the children were. We, we so, have been so disconnected from, from, you know, being human um, almost. We've been so disconnected. We've, we've basically now have... Uh, 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 a shield around us, you know, that makes us almost walk around stories of death and kidnapping we, and murder. It seems we all have developed that through some way, yeah, exactly. here in Nigeria, and doesn't mean anything um, um, to us anymore. Sadly, you know, the same way, you know, in Afghanistan, if you have a bomb blast now, it barely makes you know any of the international news media. It might just pop up here, or there. That's the same way in twenty. In 2012, you know, a couple of years earlier, when um, the Chibok and uh, the Chibok that happened first, yeah, Chibok happened. It was news all over the world. A couple of weeks ago, days ago, um, 121 were kidnapped in Kaduna. It didn't make news stories anywhere. It barely even showed up in in Nigerian newspapers. That's how common and how regular the kidnapping has become in Nigeria. And it's a great thing because our next conversation really is going to be on the viability of the Nigerian state. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we get into that conversation and see where we truly are going um, as a country. Um, how much longer is Nigeria going to survive if we continue you know, at this pace? How much longer are we going to you know, see ourselves as people and as human beings and love ourselves as brothers and sisters? And not to think we... of ourselves as lucky or fortunate exactly. to be united. To be united. Oh, my. Um, so, so, great conversation we're moving into next um, after the short break. Thank you so much for enjoying our little history uh, lessons this morning. And we'll be back. Stay with us.